Podcast Network. I am your host, a man who once had his heart completely broken. I, I, I was going to say a girl, but it's not true. <laughs> I actually had to sell my guitar for to go and study abroad. 1976 Les Paul. Totally heartbreaking. Colby Peterson. <laughs> On the show today, we have a man whose heart was completely broken by, I think, a girl. Chappy, tell us the story. Yeah, junior year of high school. High school girlfriend broke up with me at a friend's house. Long story short, I walked all the way from Plain City to Harrisville, distance of, I believe, about six, seven miles. Yeah, it's it's a little ways. Uh, so Dustin Chapman on the show today. Um, good times on our heartbreak. So uh, we got a big show up for you folks this week. Uh, this one's packed. So uh, we got a player interview. We have sophomore quarterback Kylan Weiser on the, on the line with us. We're going to chat with him. A little bit about his journey from Glendale, Arizona. The the, I guess I'm going to call it the uh, the warm confines of Glendale, Arizona, all the way up here to uh, the snowy peaks of Ogden, Utah. We can talk about his journey and also his recent play at quarterback position here at Weber State. Then we're going to talk a little bit about the game on Saturday against UC Davis. Uh, we got a little bit of media and some post game interview stuff from Coach Jay Hill and uh, defensive lineman Jared Sheese for you. We can talk about that. And then we're going to talk about volleyball. Volleyball had a couple of really good dubs against Portland State and Sac State in the Swenson this week. So we're going to talk about that now 2-0 in conference play. But before we get into all that, I want to encourage you, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the show, whether that's on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Stitcher. All good spots to find Weber State Weekly. We're also on social media. You might be watching the show right now on this live stream. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, you can also watch the show on YouTube if that's a place that you like. So check us out. Um, we also have a Patreon. You go to patreon.com slash Weber State Weekly. You can support the Weber State Weekly's, uh, I guess, our, our work and what we're trying to do with highlighting the, the best things and the good things that are happening up, up at Weber State. So go to patreon.com slash Weber State Weekly. If you become a patron, you can join our game day Slack chat where we talk about what we really feel like. It's all in there. So check it out. So with that, let's bring in sophomore quarterback Kylan Weiser. Kylan, thanks so much for taking some time to chat with us here on Weber State Weekly. Yes, sir. How you guys doing? Man, we are so good. Uh, appreciate you taking the time. I know you're probably super busy in the midst. You guys have a big road trip this weekend coming up. Going to take the trip down to San Luis Obispo to take on the Cal Poly Mustangs, which is always a nice trip if you can make it. And uh, you're lucky enough to get to do that. So thanks for taking the time. Yes, sir. So, Kylan, I wanted to start out by asking you, you're, like we noted at the top, you're from Glendale, Arizona. Um, had some accolades down there. Played in the state championship game for your high school. Um, man uh some some really good things there uh, talk to me a little bit about how you know playing in the state championship game and you know being an all uh, the, the way that it was described in the app you were all area uh quarterback and a punter we'll have a question for you on that but talk to us about how those kind of high pressure situations have kind of prepared you for some of the stuff you've done at weber state thus far yeah so uh i i started playing football when i was six years old uh tackle football which is not not normal but uh, I loved it ever since I started. I was kind of wimp the first couple of years. And then, you know, <laughs> uh, as I got into it, it was just something that me and my dad had really done together. He was, he's kind of like the reason that I'm here. But um, I think the preparation for football, you know, is, is just – it comes down to, like, determination and hard work. And I think if anybody – you know, if you have the time and the effort that you can, you can put into it, it just – it works out well in your favor, but yeah, you know, high pressure situations, the state game was nerve wracking, um, never, you know, all that, but it doesn't, that, nothing from high school compares to playing in a college football game in front of that many people. I mean, that's a good point. Of course, like you said, uh, playing, playing in the, in the state championship game is one thing, but playing on ESPN against a team like James Madison, um, all over the country. I mean, everybody in the country was watching that game. That was the biggest game in the, in the country uh, a couple weeks ago. So, you know, started out in Glendale, played some high pressure games, of course, played in the, in the state championship game, but ultimately decided to come up to Ogden, uh, leave the desert and come to the mountains. Talk to us a little bit about how Weber State got on your radar and how you ultimately chose this place to play your college football. Yeah, so at, <clears throat> starting sophomore year, I, I had started getting a couple of offers um, and senior. Yeah, we still got you, man. Oh, now we can't hear you, though. There we go. Uh-oh. <laughs> I think he's on mute. Go ahead, Kyle. Can you hear us now? 
Hello. Yeah, we can still hear you. Yep, we got you. We got you. Oh, you can't hear me. Can you see me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I cannot yeah, yeah, see. Yeah, we you. can. Yeah, yeah. Can you can you hear us, Kylan, at all? Okay. Well, um, I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. Okay, be right back. All right, folks, so no sweat there. We're going to have Kylan hop off and then hop back on really quickly uh, just to kind of figure that out. Not not a big deal. Uh, technical difficulties happen. But, live uh, yeah, show, right? Yeah, right, live show, and that's the way it goes. And so, yeah, when Kylan comes back, of course, we want to hear a little bit, of, like we said, about how his journey to Weber State and also kind of why he chose to to play in Ogden. So, Kylan, can you hear us? He's back. Yeah, sorry, I had a phone call. I think it messed something up. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. But yeah, man, so just want to jump back into it. Talk to us a little bit about why you chose Ogden, Utah to play your college football, leaving the desert to come to the mountains. Yeah, so after I took my I took my visits to a couple different schools and then I came to Weber and uh, it, it was like unlike any other school. The coaches were great. The, uh, the host that I had uh, was awesome. All the players were super nice. Even the people that we met on campus, the teachers, it just, it felt, it kind of felt like home. Um, it felt like I wasn't, leaving, you know, my house 11 hours away and coming to a crazy different spot. Felt like I had people here that I could trust and that I knew already. Um, and uh, sorry, roommates just got home. But, you know, it just it, it felt like it, it just felt like a place where I wouldn't it wouldn't be that big of a culture shock. You know, if it, like I had I already had friends here. And of course, Chris coming with me really helped uh, because we had we were buddies in high school, not in high school, but after high school when we met each other. So that's kind of why I chose Weaver state. I just, I loved it. For after, after, after that visit, it wasn't really, I didn't really have to do much thinking. Yeah. Nice. And so like you noted, um, a, a friend who you know, lived not very far away, also from Arizona, <clears throat> Chris Jackson, uh, good to see Chris back and healthy, of course, in the lineup. I, the, the past couple of times we've seen him come into the game, it's always seems, seems like in short yarded situations. And I always say, all right, we're bringing in the battering ram. Here we go. Can get those, <laughs> get, can get those couple yards. Chris is going to get it done. So, uh, good yeah. to see you guys kind of together. And also, like we said, good to see him back. Chappie, you have questions for Kylan. Yeah. So Kylan, um, you know, obviously it's been a little bit of a strange season for the quarterbacks, right? Uh, had a few folks saw you and Randall Johnson. He gave you a hug right before kickoff last Saturday. I mean, it seems like there's a lot of camaraderie between the QBs in the room. One, what's that room like? What's the QB room like? And And two, I mean, how is it playing with a bunch of other guys where, you know, there's only one spot available and you guys all have to support each other. But, you know, at the end of the day, there's only one guy that can play at a time. It's competitive for sure. And I think that that is what makes, um, you know, Coach Hammer always tells us that he uh, he likes it when he has a hard decision because it means we're all playing well and that he has uh, that he has confidence in us, you know, no matter who's in the game. So it, it's it was good. I mean, especially throughout fall camp, you know, it went back and forth and there was a lot of competition. Um you know, obviously with Bronson being hurt, it's a bummer, but, you know, like we call it picking up the rifle. You just, you have to step in, you have to be ready. Um, yeah. So, uh, oh, sorry, those are comments. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I so know. Ben Nadolski on the city council in Ogden, I guess you played with his, uh, with his nephew, Andrew down I, in high school. I, I did. Yeah. He's a, he was a great kid. He's what he's on our offensive line. Awesome. Yeah. I honestly, I had no idea that he was here. That's crazy. I'm going to have to talk to him. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I mean, the, the quarterback room is, is, uh, it's a competitive room. Obviously there's only one spot, you know, it's not like other positions where you have three, four of them. Um, and that's the best thing about being a quarterback is there's, there's a lot of pressure on you. That's why there's, you know, that's why there's only one spot. It's, it's a lot to take in and it's a hard job to do, but being around the guys that we have in the room, there's no hate, you know, we compete against each other every day in practice and, you know, we obviously want to be the one that wins, but, there's no, there's, it's just love between us. And like you said, you know, Randall came up and gave me a hug before the game and told him good luck. And, you know, I did the same for him and we both do the same for Bronson when he's playing. So, it, you know, it, it, it hurts sometimes when you're not playing, but for the most part, I think everybody in our room has the idea that we want the team to win and whoever's going to, you know, set that up for us best is going to be the one who plays and we're okay with it. 
Yeah, definitely okay. the kick. It seemed like, like you said, uh, Kyle, and starting out this game, um, knew that you know it looked like you were probably going to start because we weren't really sure at game time because of Bronson's injury how things were going to shake out. You ended up getting the start, and so you know, good to see that there's that camaraderie there, and just kind of everybody wants to win. Uh, I think mm -hmm. that's the bottom line. <clears throat> Chappie, you had a question. Yeah, so you know, Kyle, you came in against JME last week uh, at halftime. Uh, went 13 for 22, 164 yards in a TD um, to Rashid. H how hard is it to come off the bench, you know, somewhat cold <laughs> in a situation like that where you're where you're just starting half? Well, it was tough, but um, to be honest, it was. I just saw it as an opportunity, an opportunity to play, which I hadn't gotten to play like that in quite a while. Um, so I, I saw it as an opportunity to help my team to get in the game to play. And I think one of the biggest things that a lot of guys miss out on when they get to, a, you know, the college level is having fun. So I just went out there and I had fun. And, you know, the the way that things got rolling was, you know, it wasn't it wasn't me. I was just doing what I was coached to do. But the other guys were making plays. Our receivers, our running backs, the offensive line were dominating. So, I mean, it was a bummer that we ended up losing that game. Um, but I think I think it was, you know. We were we were juiced after that you know that first drive when we got out there and we drove it down and scored. Everybody was super happy about it, and I think it just kind of gave the, our whole team a spark, and, you know, an interest to keep playing and keep going. That's awesome. Yeah, That's yeah great. like you said, coming in on that drive, scoring a touchdown, throwing that touchdown pass to Rashid Shahid. You know, the offense showing some life, saying, "Okay, we're not going to go away quietly. Yes, we're down big right now to to a really good team in James Madison, but uh, we're not going to go away." And so it was good to see that life. Uh, but I want to turn the page now and talk a little bit about your start this week. I believe this was your first career start at Weber State, right? Yes, sir, it was. Yeah. And so, um, you know, a pretty good one. 19 of 32 for 225 yards, a touchdown, but two picks. Uh, talk to me how you felt about the performance, what you felt went well, and kind of what you're working on as you get ready to take the trip down to SLO. Well, I think overall our offense played a, a pretty good game. Um there's just a lot of little things like we talked about in the interview after the game with Jared. Uh, there's a lot of little things that we need to focus on and it's really just about finishing drives and yes, definitely winning the turnover margin. Um, those two interceptions were, you know, the, especially the one out of the end zone hurt us a lot. And I take full responsibility for, for those. I just, uh, I just got to make better decisions and, you know, those clamp down times. And then, like I said about finishing drives, there was a couple plays where, you know, fourth down, third down when we needed a play to happen. And, you know, we either didn't get it or the ball went to the wrong spot. So it's really just about finishing drives and winning the turnover margin. And I think that game is, a, you know, is a, we have a completely different outcome. Yeah, I think a really good point uh, that normally the Wildcats have been really good at the turnover margin. Um, that's, I think, a thing that Jay Hill, Coach Jay Hill focuses on. They always want to be winning in the, in the turnover margin, but it's been a little bit of a struggle. But I would also say that the thus far, the teams that the Wildcats have played this year have been very good, top-tier talents. And so uh, it's understandable that maybe you might not get as many turnovers as you would like because you're playing against good teams. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, the turnover margin is huge for our program. That's that's where It's in our plan to win. It's one of the five main things that we focus on. Um, and – so, you know, the, our, our rule is offense don't turn the ball over and defense, if they do, you have to, you have to win. So if they turn it over once, you got to get at least two. So, you know, but um, our defense played great. Our defense played really good. Uh, the offense has just got to pick it up a little bit and, and uh, figure some things out. So Kylan, you know, with the injury to Bronson, it's clear that Matt Hammer seems to be drawing plays up to, to the strengths of, of you and Randall in, in respective situations. Um, one of yours absolutely seems to be that you are extremely fleet of foot. <laughs> okay. You had 52 <laughs> yards on the ground last week. I, for a lot of Wildcat fans, I think that was, that was surprising. We, we, not having seen you play a ton, we didn't, I don't think we knew that you had moves like that. So is that, is Colby mentioned you being a punter in high school as well. I mean, does the running come naturally to you? Is that something you brought to Weber State or is that something you've worked on while you've been here? Well, it's definitely something that I had to deal with a little bit in high school. Um, we had a great offensive line, but we played a lot of really good defenses. And so running around was just kind of, you know, normal for me. And especially in youth ball, I had to run a lot too. Uh, starting out, we, you know, especially when you're kids, there's not much passing that you do. So everybody kind of runs the ball. 
and I, I had played both ways ever, up until my sophomore year. I actually started both ways my freshman year of high school at defensive end and quarterback. So um, I think I think running was was more is something that I've always felt more comfortable with. Uh, I've obviously I've definitely worked on it since I've gotten here, get, trying to get stronger and faster, and working on it that way with Coach Rosinski, who's the best strength coach in the country. Um, I'm sorry. I'm trying to read and talk at the same time, but nah, no uh, worries, man. Just a just a quick yeah. note from from Ben Adolski saying uh, that uh, you know your your buddy Andrew's playing at Stetson in Florida, having a good time, but uh, asks about you a lot. So hang in there, man. Yeah, yeah. I I, uh, I miss that guy. He he. I, I do remember him going to college, and that was uh, that was kind of you know those those couple of guys that went that year was was uh, like man, I want to go play somewhere. You know, just because I had I had gotten my first offer. Uh, sophomore year and then after that I didn't really hear from from uh, Idaho until senior year again so it was still kind of up in the air mm. and that was it was motivation for me seeing those guys do all that so but uh yeah I mean the the running game we do a lot of quarterback runs um even when Bronson's in the game and I think uh you know like you said coach Hammer's just trying to play to our strengths uh and uh so yeah that's just how that's just how uh he sees it and that's how that's how it went in the game so, Kylan, I got one more question for you. We've noted a couple of times in the broadcast here tonight that you were a high school punter, uh, and you know you talked a little bit about how that was just something that you did before we started on the show here tonight, that um, it was a thing that you did because you needed to do it, but you did it well, and you were all area for your your high school down there in Glendale. So it's not just like you were punting. You were punting at a pretty high level. So I wondered, uh, you ever go head-to-head with, uh, with punter Mac Morgan? No, I, uh, the only, the only time I think I've ever punted since I've, since I've been in college is when coach Hill asked me, or he asked the whole quarterback group, he said, did, did any of you guys punt in high school? And I said, yeah, I did. Cause my, we made a highlight tape about it, but, uh, and that was the only time he asked me to kick a ball and he, I kicked one and he was like, okay, cool. Just something more for his back pocket maybe. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, I've never, never challenged McKenzie. He's a great kid. I love him to death, and he's a really good punter. Yeah, no, Mac, uh, Mac Morgan, a really good punter, and I think he's done a pretty good job this season. Um, uh, so I, I'd say that I, that maybe that's a thing that needs to happen in practice coming down the road. Like, oh right, man, pay per view <laughs> event. Yeah, I mean, how many guys on, on the team can punt? Let's see who's got it. Let's, uh, you know, maybe let Mac judge everybody. You know, let him, let him sit out as the ringer. But <laughs> yeah, man. But uh, Colin Weiser, we want to thank you so much for taking a little bit of time to talk to us here at Weber State Weekly. Uh, we know that you're going to be taking the trip down to San Luis Obispo, like we said, to take on Cal Poly this weekend. Um, that game will be on ESPN+. Plus. Um, I think the game is going to be at – let me check my notes here really quickly. That game will be at 6.30 p.m. Mountain Time, so you can check it out on ESPN+. Plus and 103.1 The Wave if you want to hear Steve Klauke. I think you'll be back by then, so – Colin Weiser, thanks so much for taking the time on Weaver State Weekly, man. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. You were awesome. Yeah, you're awesome, too. We appreciate you. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, want to thank Kylan Weiser one more time for taking some time to chat with us here at Weaver State Weekly. I know he's busy, and so really appreciate it getting to know him a little bit better, especially since now he's a starting quarterback, uh, or at least will be, presumably, until we see the – we see the injuries kind of work themselves out. But um, now we want to talk a little bit about the game going forward. Um, we want to go back and talk about what happened against Davis uh, this like, last weekend. I think it was a little bit frustrating. The Wildcats uh, had some they had some things happening for them, things that didn't quite work out. And uh, Wildcats ended up taking the 17-14 to 14 loss at home. Uh, Stewart Stadium has not been uh, very kind this year. Had, had a couple of struggles for the Wildcats. And so um, we prepared a couple of things for folks. I think we're going to start with some post-game audio. Chappie, you good with that? Let's do it. Yeah. So we're going to start out with, uh, this is a, this is a, some post-game audio from coach Jay Hill after the game, talking a little bit about missed opportunities and uh, what we weren't able to accomplish on the field. So check it out. Frustrating loss. Um, had every opportunity in the third quarter, fourth quarter to go up two, three scores and can't do it. Uh, thought the defense played outstanding till the fourth quarter. Then we gave up too many first downs, too many yards that, that quarter. Um, and the reality is they made the plays at the end when they needed to and we didn't. 
We need to practice a little better on Wednesday and Thursdays. That's one thing I know we can do better. Um, we need to make the plays when they're there to be made. Uh, a good example, we make an interception tonight that's going to be a huge deal and end up getting a rough in the passer call. That just that was critical in that game. Just be smart in that situation. Let them throw the interception. Uh, finding a way out of that drive at the end. You know, there's a lot of opportunities we had. Just somebody make a play, do some. Everybody do what they're supposed to do at that moment and get out of the drive and the game's over, we win. Um, at the end of the game, we got Justin Malone open, but we throw it a little high and it gets intercepted. So the reality, there's opportunities there. We got to get a little better. Coach has got to get better. I got to get better. I got to take, I take these losses very hard. Um, we just, we got to be better in the turnover margin right now. We're not, we're not good enough through four games in the turnover margin. That's really the difference in our season between being two or three wins at least and one win. So got a lot to work on. And that was coach Jay Hill in his post game press conference, talking a little bit about missed opportunities for the Wildcats on Saturday against Davis. Um, noted a couple of, of key turning points there, roughing the passer call, which of course was critical. Um, had thrown an interception there. UC Davis had, and uh, ended up getting overturned because of uh, roughing the passer call. And, um, you know, it's just, I mean, we can complain about it all we want. The refs, they were doing some interesting things on Saturday night, Chappie, but I mean, Hey, so talk to me about, you know, after hearing what coach Jay Hill had to say in that presser, kind of, what you think is going to happen going forward. Cause it, he, it seemed to me that Jay Hill obviously not happy with the way it's been going. And uh, there seems like there's going to be a, a further drill down on fundamentals and, and details seems to be the theme from these conversations. Yeah. 100%. It feels like the overriding theme is, is, is just missed opportunities, right? It's, it's correcting the small things that make a big difference. Uh, we heard that a couple times on, Saturday night in the post game, we heard it in the weekly presser last Tuesday. We heard it in the post game against GMU. Um, Coach Hill and, and the players and the staff, it feels like they clearly feel like they have all the talent in the world to compete at a top level. Uh, they're just, for whatever reason, the discipline, whatever it is, just isn't there, right? And for me, my initial thoughts, I, I went back and did a little comparison, uh, and I, I tweeted it out a little earlier today on our account, uh, the more I thought about it and, and I'll tell the audience, I, as I've gotten older, you know, when I, in my younger days, my team losing, like would ruin my weekend, you know, like it was, it was bad. <laughs> and of course, as you've gotten older and as I get older, I realize that there's more important things in life and, uh, they, I don't get quite as mad, but I mean, I was, I, I went to bed angry on Saturday night and I, I, I'm just a fan. I can't imagine what the coaches and the players went through. Um, but I, the more I thought about it, Sunday and today, Monday, um, the more it just felt like that SIU playoff game that we, that we had in the spring. I mean, it, it in in so many ways, it seemed like it mirrored that game where it was, you know, we we got up early, we were in control, we had just some lost opportunities along the way, took made some un unnecessary chances, whatever, and then at the end of the game, um, it bit us in the butt, and we ended up losing late. It, both games seem to have a very similar theme and almost mirror results to them. Yeah, I think that there are definitely some similarities between the SIU game and this one. Uh, obviously, losing that SIU game was a big deal. And, uh, you know, the Wildcats losing the first round of the playoffs as the Big Sky Conference champs. Uh, not a good look and obviously obviously very frustrating for the season that they had, which had been kind of up and down and, you know, a lot of close wins. Um, but I think you're right, Chappie, that uh, overall the Coach Hill is right as well that, this is a, an opportunity to kind of see where the, the fundamentals are lacking, the details, and uh, tightening some things up because I think at this point there's not a lot left. I mean, the, the margin for error for the Wildcats if they look to make the playoffs is pretty slim going forward here. Oh, 100%. And we've, we've, we've been kind of debating this internally for the past couple of days and with some of our fellow Big Sky Pod, Podcast Network cohorts, but the margin of error is – basically gone. I mean, they have, you know, they have, I think what six games left and two of those are against Montana state and Iwash, Iwu, you know, they have to win one or both of those games. I haven't quite decided yet. I'm, 
I, I think it's one. I think some of the other folks around think maybe they have to win both of them, but they got to win some games in order to get in the playoffs at this point. I mean, it, it, they they may have to run the table, right? I, I think we're we're not necessarily talking about seeding anymore. We're we're talking about just getting in the playoffs at this point. Yeah, I think I'm personally, uh, Chappie, I'm in the camp of I think that you have to win both of those games and keep in mind that they are going to be tough. Um, Eastern Washington, very talented right now. Eric Berrier is throwing the ball at a very high level, and that game will be in Cheney, and it is a difficult place to win. Uh, the Inferno is tough to play on, and it's difficult to win in Cheney. And then also Montana State coming to Ogden once again. Uh, they are a difficult team as well. Uh, they had a good showing against Wyoming, and uh, they have run the ball super well. And so uh, Matt McKay up there is doing a great job throwing the ball as well. Uh, and Ifanse, they're running back just a couple of studs out there. And so two tough teams. And I think that if the Wildcats don't win both, um, there's going to be a lot of hand wringing on Selection Sunday if they should win the rest of their games as, as, as everyone expects. Because, you know, you look around at the resume and you go, well, what, what's the thing that really sets you apart from somebody else? Um, it, it might not be there. Well, so, they, they can't stub their toe like they you can't have a bad loss at this point, you know, so so the remaining games are at Poly, home against Montana State at Eastern Washington at Idaho State, uh, home against Portland State at SUU at Northern Colorado. OK, no, 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 no. That, that game is here. No, no, oh, Colorado me. game is the, is the, is the thank game. you. Got, got dyslexic there, I guess, for a second. Um, you can't outside of Eastern Washington, Montana. You, you can't lose any more games like they, they to me at least. And, and you, you feel they need to win out. So they either need to win out or they need to lose one of Eastern Washington or Montana state and hope things go right for them. Right. So, so the margin of error is pretty much gone. Right. But honestly, credit to, to Davis on Saturday. I mean, they certainly their offensive scheme was good. Like they, they, they kept running things and, and, the way that they were running misdirection and the way that they were were setting up setting up fakes and just it was it was good, especially on that last drive when it became apparent once they were gonna once they crossed midfield that they were gonna go four downs no matter what happened, right? I mean that's that's a tough ask for any defense against an offense that was executing that well. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit more about this Davis game because there are a couple of things that stood out. Uh, I don't think we're going to talk about the refs too much more. But um, one of the things that stood out to me was the fact that the Wildcats, the Wildcat defense allowed just 149 yards passing, which is saying something because Hunter Rodriguez coming into this game was two-time Big Sky Player of the Week, uh, a very, uh, I guess, a very capable passer, um, you know, maybe not quite on the on the level of somebody like Eric Berrier, who has Walter Payton Award aspirations, but still very capable passer, held to just 149 yards. Uh, he ended up going out of the game and the backup came in um, and threw for, I think, like 50 yards or something like that. But he was like seven for nine. Like he was he was efficient. Yeah. So you're right. Seven for nine threw for 50 yards. That's Miles Hastings, the backup for Hunter Rodriguez when he came out. Um, but only 149 yards for a pretty high power offense uh, in the air. I think the struggle, though, comes when you look at rushing. We knew that Alonzo Gilliam was going to be a good back. We talked a lot about him in the spring. We knew that he was going to be good. Only only netted 62 yards, but then Hunter Rodriguez himself gets 46 yards, and then Trent Tompkins gets 31. So the, the Aggies come away with 165 yards on the ground. Chappie, talk to me a little bit about that. Is the ground game how teams are beating Weber? Because it feels that way right now. It seems like that's where they're having opportunities to move the ball because secondary is good and they've been able to kind of stop the pass by and large and keep things down. Yeah, when I went back and rewatched the game, uh, that was one of the notes I made was that RDBs played really well. They, they played really well on Saturday night. Um, it seems like... I don't know. I guess I'm torn here. Yeah, teams are able to rush against us. You broke some broke some big rushes. There were less missed tackles this week than there were against JMU. Um, it just, I don't know. End of the game, we just we just didn't get it done. You know, I mean that's that that's what it comes down to. And, and I and I'm not blaming the defense per se. I'm the team didn't get it done. I mean they had three or four opportunities on offense between the late third quarter and fourth quarter to to put something in the end zone. Um, and they didn't, and the defense, you know, ultimately gave up a long drive there at the end. Uh, but we just, 
it seemed like all the opportunities in the world were there. We outpassed Davis. We outrushed them. Um, unfortunately, we also out penalized them <laughs> and also out turnovered them. So, uh, so we, we just, we were better on offense. You know, we just, we just weren't, we weren't there to finish. Uh, I honestly go back and question a little bit. Uh, the, the, I, I went back and rewatched this too. There were the two times in the first half that we went for it on fourth down. The first one, you know, that, that, that would have been a 45 yard field goal. Yeah. You, you'd probably go for it on fourth on that one. The second one was tough. The one in the second quarter was tough because they were, they were at the 22, the offense was rolling at that point, And then they passed on third and one and, and didn't get it. And then went for it on fourth and one and got stuffed. And at that point, I mean, it would have been a 37 yard field goal. Uh, that one's a little more questionable. It feels like, it feels like maybe we left points on the board there. Yeah, I could see what you mean. And, uh, comment there from Jeff Millard talking about getting out refed. And I mean, I got to agree. There were some, definitely some calls where I'm, where I'm scratching my head going for real. I mean, we, we have a montage prepared, but I think we're going to, we're going to move past that. Uh, but Jappy, one thing that stands out to me, the Wildcats outgained Davis by nearly a hundred yards in this one, but she fell short by three points. Uh, I mean, going into this, did you expect the Wildcats to outpass and outrush the UC Davis offense, considering, you know, the numbers that they had put up previously, is that something that you expected? No, not at all. And, and Kylan Weiser was good. Like he, he played really well. The, the offense played well. I, I actually, if I were to have like an MVP of the game for UC Davis, to me, it would be their punter, right? Um, their punter pinned Weber deep a number of times. And one thing, especially, you know, quarterback making his first start, you know, it's one thing to, to take advantage of, 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 of long drives, but it, you know, field position matters. You know, when you're asking a guy to come in and in his first start and, and have a 10, 12, 14 play drive and put it in the end zone, starting from the 10 yard line, you know, that's hard. And that, and it seems like that's what happened to Weber on Saturday. It seemed like they would start out, you know, get two or three first downs, get into the opposing opponent's territory, get into Davis territory, and then it would stall. Right. And, and, and again, a lot of that just has to do with Jay Hill mentioned it, but no turnovers. They, they, they'd hardly ever had a short field, right? And, and that matters that those kinds of things play into, especially a close game, they play into you ultimately winning or not. Well, we talked a little bit about this already, but Wildcats are now one of one for three. Um, they got a couple of FCS losses against some good uh, opponents, uh, which could be a saving grace because James Madison looks to be every bit a, J a national championship contender. And then Davis looks to be rising as well. I think they rose to number eight in the poll this week after their win over the Wildcats in Ogden. So uh, them continuing to do well, I think, is important. Uh, they need to continue to win in the big sky because if so that sort of helps make the case for the wildcats that yes indeed uh they are a, a quality team and that the wildcats you know just had a bad day against a good team but i mean chappy do you feel like right now it's the time to hit the panic button in ogden or is it uh wait and kind of see for a playoff spot i mean it depends what your definition of, of panic button is you know we we still have a very good shot at going to the playoffs right we still have a very good shot we have a very good team it's apparent we we hung with we've just hung with two top 10 teams i don't know that anybody else in fcs has played two top 10 teams right um so you know panic button not yet um maybe talk to me after after specifically the montana state game you know if that one if that one doesn't go well if we if we lose that game and we're asking our guys to potentially go on the road the next week to cheney and and win you know in order to to, to even have a chance at the playoffs yeah, it might be time to hit the panic button. I, I'm, I'm not of the, you know, our offensive numbers look good. I'm not of the, the opinion that we hit the panic button on the offense yet. I mean, I, I know there's a lot to be desired there. I, th I know I think we'd like the team to, to finish the drives a little bit more. Um, but there's more that goes into it. I, I'm not panicking yet, but we're not far from it. Mm. So last question I had for you then, Chappie, was the Wildcats obviously going down to Cal Poly this weekend in San Luis Obispo, like we talked about with Kylan. Uh, they're a team that is struggling right now. Bo Baldwin, their coach down there, still kind of working out the kinks. Uh, they had played a couple of games in the spring season uh, before calling it quits. You know, they just uh, decided that they weren't going to continue in the spring, so they dropped out. Um, and so he's really kind of still first year head coach, still trying to get some things rolling. This is his first kind of real season where he's trying to move some things and they struggled. Um, they had a, they had a tough go against Montana last week up in Missoula, I believe. 
And uh, they've also, uh, I can't remember who else they played thus far, but I mean, it's, it's been, it's been tough. And so what can the Wildcats do to kind of, how, how would you approach this game if you're head coach Jay Hill to get the team back on track and maybe get a little bit of swagger back? Yeah, they need to go in and, and play well, but they also need to get healthy. You know, I, I, I tend to think that there's still some lingering injury issues from, from the spring season that's, that's, that's kind of hurting these guys, right? I, I, I really do think that. Um, so one, get healthy. Two, you're correct. You know, Polly, Bo Baldwin, you know, they're, they're converting from a, a triple option team into the Bo Baldwin offense that he ran at Eastern Washington. Uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a rough go for those guys at this point. So get healthy, get, get some reps in, um, win the game, win the game handily and, and give your guys some confidence going into the next week. Yeah, I think that's probably the way. And, uh, I think you're right about the injury thing, Chappie. Some of our other, um, big sky podcast, uh, colleagues, folks like Brent Wahlberg up at the Grizzpan pod have noted that, uh, yeah, that, that he feels that the teams that didn't play in the spring actually have the advantage going into the fall because they'll be rested and ready. Um, I think that that doesn't necessarily play out for Sac state, but it definitely looks to be the case with Montana and Montana state. They look to be very good and healthy, obviously having not played too many games. Uh, Montana did play a couple of games, but they were pretty soft, I think in the spring. And so, uh, that, his, his theory may bear, bear out because, uh, pun intended, <laughs> you like what I did there. Uh, because yeah, 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 because it does look, I mean, obviously everybody has Montana at number one in the conference right now, Montana state looking very good at maybe a, uh, a four or a three or four position, depending on who you want to talk to. Um, so yeah, I mean that, that definitely looks like to be the case. Uh, we'll see as the season wears on, if that does end up, um, bearing fruit. Um, so that's Davis. That's the game. Uh, look for Cal Poly on the weekend, uh, this year, this weekend on Saturday, six, six o'clock. I think I said six 30, didn't I? Uh, mountain time ESPN plus catch the game there. And we'll see how the Wildcats hopefully can write the ship against the Mustangs. One more thing. Uh, the uniform combo on Saturday. Oh yeah. I know the Didn't kiddies love that, but, uh, that, that was solid. I, uh, I don't know that I've ever seen him use that combination with the, the black pants and the purple shorts. Uh, interesting to me that we have not seen the flying W come out yet this year for helmet. I will just note that, but that, uh, that uniform combo on Saturday was, that was solid. So my understanding with flying W this year is that that will be a throwback mark and that throwback mark will come in the next home game against Montana state. So the homecoming game will be the throwback game. So expect to see that on, I think it's the 15th. That's a Friday night, 6 PM. Uh, I actually am going to be in attendance. That's right before we move. So I'm going to be there. Can't wait to see you all folks out there as well. But I did love that uniform combo. I thought the purple shirts with the black lids and the black pants was money. I thought they looked great. Um, just had some struggles on the field. So, Chappie, now let's switch gears. Uh, our last little bit here. I want to. We're not going to play a game this week because there's so much to talk about. But I want to talk about volleyball, man, because volleyball I think had a really good showing this week against a couple of good teams. Um, maybe some people, if you're not as familiar with uh, Big Sky volleyball, you would think Portland State. Ah, Portland State's not that good. Well, right now Portland State has a very good defensive team leading the the conference in digs, and so um, I think that you know having. Having the Wildcats win against Portland, who is a good defensive team, um, and then also turning around and beating Sac State in the Swenson, which, by the way, we should note that Sac State was the last team to beat the Wildcats in the Swenson, so a little bit of nerves going into that match uh, as to what would happen because Sac State is a good, a quality volleyball squad. But uh, the Wildcats come away with two dubs, man. And um, so I think I want to uh, – first question, kind of diving into this, Wildcats, like I said, hosted Portland State and Sac State in the Swenson this weekend, came away with two dubs, and the story seemed to be the block to me. Uh, the block has greatly improved. Bailey Bodily and Emma Mangum had some really good games this weekend. I don't know, Chappie, what do you think? Uh, things things getting better there at the block? Is this just a function of playing teams that have people about the same size? Because that was a tough non-conference schedule. Why do you think the block took a step forward this week? Any ideas? Yeah, I, I think just playing the non-conference schedule they did, um, you know, Coach Larson intentionally gamed up, as it were. Uh, yeah. you, you're going to see the fruit of that all throughout conference season because, yeah, they're they're used to they're used to playing 
honestly a higher level of competition. So, so there will be more blocks. There will be more aces. They're they're going to play better as the season wears on because of the preseason that they've had. Yeah, I mean, and good, good, nice segue there. Uh, Because I teed this one up. I said the Wildcats dealt a number of aces again in both matches. 12 against Portland State, 10 against Sac State. Are the aces a key feature of the system that Jeremiah Larson and company are running? And uh, is Weber hashtag a state? Is that a new thing that we're going to start? Hashtag a state. That's not been taken by anybody yet. I I don't care. (laughs) I'm rolling with it, man. Because, geez, these ladies know how to find the ball from the back of the court. Yeah, when... uh, I know when we had, you know, Sam Shees on, she specifically mentioned the Aces as being part of the game plan. Uh, and and it way for a while at Weber State, and it's it's great. Love, love seeing them do that. Yeah, I mean, and, and if you haven't been to the Swenson, um, do check out the next match. I think it's going to be on Tuesday. Really weird. This match is going to be on Tuesday uh, against Portland or against Idaho State in the Swenson. That's October 5th. Super weird. Anyway. But if you're in the if you're in the gym for that, and you'll you'll see what happens with any time that the Wildcats score an ace, they'll flip over the card at the top on the track, and they'll just keep track of the aces the way you do in a baseball game, keeping track of those K's, or the way that, that the destruction. Shout out to the WSU destruction, the student section. They've been showing up a lot lately. They'll they'll put the threes over over the banister in the, in the D. You know, we got the same thing going on in the Swenson. Man, love to see it. Uh, the student involvement all around has been great this fall. I'm not sure if it's a function of them uh, not being able to do much of anything <laughs> last last school year, but uh, you know another good good uh, good crowd at the football game on Saturday. And I know I've heard you folks often mention what what the students are like at the volleyball game. So that's that's great to see. Good good job, students. Credit where credit is due. Yeah, for sure. But Chappie, there was one thing that I wanted to point out, and it was that so. Portland State committed eight service errors in the match on Thursday, which I felt like was like, oh, okay. And I wondered, and I kind of want to get your thoughts on this. Do you think that it's a it's a thing that the Wildcats kind of do to teams or they kind of rattle them early and they get them making mistakes like that? Or is that just unforced errors? You know what I mean? Like they're just struggling. And so they're making service errors, giving free points to the Wildcats. Which do you think it is? I I imagine it's, you know, when you're, when you're the underdog playing the team that's supposed to win, you know, oftentimes if they get off to a, to a fast start, it, it does rattle you, you know? And so I imagine that that, that has a lot to play, a lot to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's kind of what I felt was that, that maybe the Wildcats were kind of getting in their heads a little bit. And that was causing some of these problems where it's like, they're, they're making mistakes, giving away free points to the Wildcats. I'd say Sac State was much cleaner in that regard. I think they only gave up like three service errors, um, but I just wonder if it's a it's a thing, just kind of a byproduct of playing fundamentally sound volleyball. The other team kind of gets off of their they get off kilter a little bit. They're struggling. They're not able to go not able to go through the same motions that they normally do, and so because of that, they start making mistakes and service errors. You know, maybe one of those mistakes that get made. Uh, Chappie, I also wanted to ask you about Michaela Sorensen. She's kind of been an unsung hero this season. She's been digging out a lot of balls. Uh, she's currently sixth in the conference, um, but I wanted, you know, but it seems to me that it's because Weber State has so many capable defenders because the Wildcats are currently second in the conference in digs. Uh, they're only behind, I think it's Portland State because uh, that lady they have up there, Snook, and she is something. But uh, yeah, Weber State behind Portland State, 758 digs thus far this season. Um, man, Michaela Sorensen, I mean, what more can we say about her? Well, what's impressive about it is, you know, we had all the seniors come back from the team. I mean, it's it's a it's a super senior laden wildcat team, right? And uh, and on honestly, it's impressive to see some of the some of the new blood come up and 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 hop right in and be able to also you know plant their spot for for many years to come here in the volleyball program at Weber. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely wanted to shout her out because I feel like we haven't talked a lot about her this year. Um, not not too much. And so kind of nice to see her really, really put on a show. Um, last thing I wanted to shout out, Chappie, this is not a volleyball thing, but soccer. I at least wanted to give them a little bit of love. This is a super packed show. Soccer ended up going 2-0 and this weekend, beating Idaho and Eastern Washington and Ogden. And uh, we'll have more on them next week, I think. I think we need to give them their due. They're finally in a conference play. They're playing really well. They had uh, some, some tough non-conference games, but just wanted to note that that Wildcats are now 
two and zero in conference play against uh, you know some decent soccer squads. So shout out to them as well. Well, you know, I, 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 I well, the soccer program's been, you know, there's a there was a transition there going from, you know, from Tim Crompton being promoted to to athletic director and 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 where they are now. And there's obviously been a transition period. So it's it's good to see them getting back to their women their winning ways. Yeah, for sure. All right, folks. So that's uh that's kind of our recap on volleyball. They'll be on the road this week. They'll be taking the Montana trip up there in Bozeman and in Missoula, taking on the Bobcats, then the Grizz. Um, but let's get to upcoming events this week. So that will be one Thursday, September 30th. Volleyball will be at Montana State. That game will be at 7 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, and you can watch it on ESPN Plus. Man, don't you love ES- ESPN Plus, Chase Chappie? How are you feeling about this, man? I love it. It's phenomenal. I mean, the the broadcasts are better quality the cameras are better you're able to watch more teams i as i kind of thought preseason i think it exposes you to a lot of the other conferences you know like if the val if the fans of the valley are getting done with their game and the weber state davis game is just starting you know espn plus makes it nice to just flip right over there so i i love it um now the the some of the Sports talk that was going on during the game on Saturday from the K Jazz announcers. Maybe not uh, so much my favorite, but overall, the, the quality of the broadcast and the camera work and things uh, the, all over the conference is improving. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely like this ESPN Plus stuff, folks. Really enjoying it. Uh, Saturday, October 2nd, volleyball will be playing at Montana. That'll be that match will be in Missoula at 2 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. You can watch it on ESPN Plus. Softball's got a, they got another game um, that you won't be able to watch it, but if you want to head up to Wildcat softball field at 1 p.m. on Saturday, you'll be able to watch the Wildcats take on UVU, just sort of a kind of a spring training session or a fall training session, as it were. So just uh, just playing some, uh, getting some training in, just kind of figuring stuff out. And then, like we said, football will be at Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo. 6.30 p.m. is the kick on that. You can get that on ESPN Plus or listen to it on 103.1 The Wave. I believe Steve Clocky will be back. So shout out to Tony Parks. He's been doing a great job handling things for Steve Clocky while he's been away. He's been doing uh, the radio. So appreciate Tony Parks. Uh, Wildcats are always in good hands when Steve Clocky is away. Um, Sunday, October 3rd, softball is going to be taken on Boise as well. That will be at noon, Mountain Daylight Time, up at Wildcat Softball Field. If you want to head up there, you can check it out. And then soccer is taken on Idaho State, 1 p.m., Mountain Daylight Time, ESPN Plus, or go check it out, uh, Wildcat so- so- uh, Soccer Field. It'll be up there for you. Uh, then finally, Tuesday, October 5th, like we noted, volleyball will be playing at uh, versus Idaho State. That match is going to be in the Swenson, 6 p.m., Mountain Daylight Time. You can watch it on ESPN Plus. And um, or you can just go to the Swenson because the Swenson is fun to go to. I don't know how you feel about that, Chappie, but I think it's great. I have I have yet to go, so I apparently I need to. <laughs> oh man, I've I've got a gift for you. It's a guy who's walking down the street just banging this bell, and it says, "Shame, shame." <laughs> Get in the Swenson, Chappie. What are you doing? I've got daughters too. It's not like they they wouldn't want to go. So yeah, we need to get over there. Yeah. I uh, also wanted to shout out Weber State Hockey's been doing really good, guys. Man, this hockey team, there's something. Uh, they're going to be playing Utah Friday, October 1st. Uh, and then Saturday, October 2nd, they'll be playing UVU. I think both those matches are on the road. Puck drops at 7 15 p.m. if you want to make the drive for either of those. But I uh, just want to shout out those guys. They went three or four this weekend up in Idaho. Did a great job. So that, that's, a, that's a quality hockey team over there. So, guys, uh, let's wrap this one up. Um, you want to email us? WeberStateWeekly at gmail.com. That's the place. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Those are the places to talk, talk to us on social media. Patreon.com slash WeberStateWeekly if you want to support us. Uh, we've got a Slack channel if you become a patron where we talk about game day stuff. Uh, check that out. And then uh, we got a blog, WeberStateWeekly.com. I've been meaning to do some recruiting stuff. I've been super busy in my you know, getting ready to move to Tennessee, but uh, we had a commit over the weekend. And so I'm going to be trying to do an interview with him very soon. Good quarterback out of Idaho committed to Weber state over the weekend. So we're going to be chatting with him hopefully really, really soon. But uh, that those are where you can find us and all of our content. So Chappie, this one has gone on for a little, a uh, little while. So let's wrap it up like we usually do. And I'll say Weber state, Weber state. Great, great, great. Go wild.